What's up, Marvel Universe fans? Uh, this is Castro Sacchio coming back again with another figure review. I want to thank everybody for being patient with me since the 4th of July weekend. Uh, fortunately, I wanted to hold back from doing a review because of San Diego Comic Con. And as you know, San Diego Comic Con was releasing some pretty great exclusives for both Marvel Universe, Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe, and Transformers. And of course, there's some Mattel stuff out there which I don't follow too much. But all the hype of Marvel Legends X-Force pack, I had to do the Marvel Universe X-Force pack. Um, I also want to give my condolences and greatest, my deepest thoughts and prayers out to the family that uh, families of the victims in Colorado from the Batman premiere shooting. I know that's not Marvel related, but uh, I just wanted to let publicly know that if you're out there, just stop, give five minutes or two minutes or whatever, and pray for those folks and those families. Um, well, here we got the X-Force pack back into the review. Now, if you want to go ahead and pause it, go ahead and read that there. Now, these three figures are part of the group, but we're never really part of the group at the same time. So I'm going to go over the, those details in a minute. But just so everybody's aware, these are all repaints, kit bashes. Look at the classic Avengers. It's a great pack right there. I'm going to review that one of these days. I have it, just don't have the reason to do it right now. Um... Deadpool comes from the Wolverine Origins, uh, Warpath is from the single carded figure, and Wolverine is actually a repaint or redeco of the Astonishing Wolverine that both came in the single pack and in the Wolverine Origins. So there's the bottom, and for you barcode freaks, proof of purchase, knock yourself out. Now this was a peg warmer, I originally got this one before it was a peg warmer and I thought it was rare, and then about 2-3 months later it became a peg warmer. I've, ho I've held on to this pack the whole time. Um, I wanted to make sure if I was going to do an X-Force review, we're going to do a full X-Force review. But with the prices of some of these X-Force figures, I mean, Warpath by himself and single carded, it's too expensive. Then you've got um, the NYCC exclusive or digital comic subscription exclusive Archangel. He's super expensive. I mean, 120 maybe 130 I've seen him go up to 150 bucks MOC. And I'm not really sure if I'm willing to spend that kind of money on a figure that um, it's going to cost that much. So, we did get a Psylocke. She's not painting her X-Force colors, but believe it or not, you see her with the red sash from time to time. Um, so this is a nice X-Force, uh, or a nice Psylocke in general. Uh, she uses the, I guess the Jean Grey, or not the Jean Grey, but the Phoenix head, and of course the standard female buck. I guess she came from the Disney store. I didn't know who said it before. I actually got this as a, as a gift from uh, someone I did a trade with. And, for taking too long and sent me an extra figure so I figured I'd open it up so thanks big ups to uh, whatever his name is I forgot I'm sorry um, but yeah this is the artwork in the back Psylocke uh, a lot of people were doing customs of her for, for a long long time and I guess Hasbro caught on and said you know what we need to come out with a Psylocke and now we know what it's going to look like so a lot of you uh, customizers right there you guys give Hasbro ideas believe it or not with your pages um, so keep up the good work. Hasbro's been listening. Obviously, they made an Electra, thanks to some of those customs. Yeah, the comic collectible shot, which is basically when you open the package, you throw it away. So it looks nice on the artwork, though. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't think it should be mentioned as an extra, but it does look nice adding to the packaging. Uh, this is kind of like when DC was handing out buttons for their universe collection, but whatever. So Psylocke is pretty pretty neat. She's a uh, pretty good looking figure. I love the paintwork on it. We're going to talk about articulation in a minute because compared to her, she takes the cake in articulation. 
and she has so much articulation she may have too much articulation um, and I think one of the weak points of her and I wish they would have fixed this but was her hip joints uh, hip joints are not ball jointed they're kind of socket jointed very similar to a GI Joe just without all that flexibility but overall she's a really good X23 she's a the clone of Wolverine she is not the daughter as a lot of people think or assume but in, I'm sure in certain universes she is but she came with a really cool looking sculpt nice mask red eyes um, here's the artwork in the back I'm disappointed they didn't give her the claw for the boot but beggars can't be choosers we got Steve Rogers Ultron and Darkhawk um, X-23, yeah, like I said, she's the clone, so a lot of people read up on that. X-Force and X-23 kind of go hand in hand. She's disturbed, like Wolverine, but with much more fucked up background, so I'm sure you guys will get it. <clears throat> so, go ahead and pause it, read it. So, X-23, she doesn't have a variant or anything. She, she does have a variant costume in the Legends, but as far as the universe is concerned, this is her only primary deck. Well, unfortunately, she became a pick warmer. So, I, my Toys R Us alone, I, there's like 15 million of them just hanging out. They've been hanging out for over a year. She's a great figure. A really, really good figure. And I'm sure you guys can come up with a lot of custom ideas by using her body mold. And I'm probably going to work on probably getting her claw in the boot. And there's her predecessor, or ancestor, uh, Wolverine. Wolverine comes from the, I want to say, the first wave. This is what people refer to as the net giraffe neck, giraffe neck Wolverine, because he has that extra neck bulging out. But overall, the paint scheme is awesome. It is actually a redeco or re kit kick bash kit bash from the Wolverine Origins. Um, or maybe it isn't a Wolverine Origins. Maybe I'll be talking on my ass. No, I think he's a Marvel Universe Wolverine. Sorry, I take it back. He doesn't have those ball joints like he does in. Wolverine Origins. Yeah, when I got it, I bought this on eBay like about a year ago. Um, it had a like a TJ Maxx sticker on it. Well, I was shocked to see they even had TJ Maxx figures hanging out, but in Marvel Universe. But I had to take the sticker off and kind of took some of the artwork off of it. But whatever. And then we've got yeah, X Force Warpath Series Two MOC. Look at that. How you like that, guys? And there's the other uh, the other. Uh, Gem, Vision, and Ugly Head Wolverine, which I will never ever buy even if you gave it to me. Uh, yeah, this is Thunderbird's brother. Um, so they came out with the X-Force version, and oh man, what the fuck. They gave us the Thunderbird X-Men colored Warpath. How nice. So essentially, this is the Warpath that mimicked his brother, in memory of his brother, when he joined the X-Men. But when he's in X-Force, he needs to be in a silver and black. When they came out with the pack, they gave us like a gray and black, which really wasn't too accurate. But when you take pictures, it's really hard to tell. So, it's a cool figure overall. It's a buck that's been used several times um, by other big figures like uh, Dark Venom. Um, I want to say Doc Samson. Guys like that, they're just pretty bulky. They'll use this figure mold. Um, I think Wonder Man uses it in the Wonder Man Quicksilver 2-pack. And then I'm not going to trick you again. I got the X, the, uh, the Archangel, the non X Force one, uh, which is essentially the same exact figure, same exact figure with a different color scheme. But this is still a great figure to have. I know Legends and San Diego Comic Con is releasing an Archangel just like this and a darker version. And of course, they've already released the X Force version. So there is a variant to this Archangel, which is Death Mask, but again, He's a pricey, you know, 50, 30 bucks for that figure. It's not really worth it, especially you're losing out on the wings and you're just getting a gold, a gold mask. Not interested. Unless you really want to collect, uh, complete your Age of Apocalypse series. This is also a fan choice uh, winner, so a lot of fans voted for him to be the way he is and be part of the Marvel Universe, which I wish they need to bring back. And of course, he was also a fan favorite when it came to the. Uh, comic digital comic subscription exclusive so let's go ahead and get this um, set open and I'll be back it'll take me a minute but I'll be back and I'm back folks looks like uh, right now this is gonna be a really long review so bear with me a little bit 
Um, this is also going to be my last review with the Marvel post poster in the background. Uh, I think I take, go a little professional for you guys, so I'm going to switch it up. Um, first off, we got X23. Let me get her into focus here. X23, you know, she's very difficult to pose because she has so much articulation in the legs. I mean, she's got the standard single ball jointed elbow, or should I say, single jointed elbow, no bicep swivel, but she does have a ball jointed shoulder, and she's got wrist twists. But the downside to that is that without having a bicep swivel or, or a ball jointed elbow, it's really difficult to pose her upper body. So let's work on this articulation here. She's got a nice ball jointed head with hinge. I want to point that out. Double jointed knees, thigh cuts. She has the socketed hips. She has, um, what do I say? Sorry, I got all that background noise. Wait one second, one second. I'm just trying to fix this thing real quick. Okay, so X X23. Really, really nice paint job overall, except for in the back, you can see the imperfection that you've got in the paintwork. But it's enough, it's in the back, you really can't notice it. Nothing to freak out over. I'm not a super mint collector, so I'll deal with it. I'm sure that I can get another X23 anytime. So there's, there's her articulation in the head. She's got that hinge, which is awesome, especially for a female character. And then, of course, there's a ball jointed head, so it can move it 360 degrees if you need to. The hair hinders a little bit. All right, you got the ball jointed shoulder. All right, up and down movement. You have the single jointed elbow, which is a ball joint, by the way. Forgive me. And you've got the wrist twist on the claw. So now we need to figure out how to get her claw on the boot. She has upper torso articulation, but no lower torso articulation. So I don't know what's up with that. I don't know why they skimped out. Like I said, she's got the socketed hip with the thigh swivel. The range of movement on the hip is very limited because of how the socket is set up. So they gave you the all extra articulation in the leg just to make up for it. There you go. She's got the thigh cut right there. She can do spin kicks. Double jointed knee, always a plus. She has boot, boot twist right at the calf. She's got the ankle pivot on a ball joint, similar to the ninjas in the G.I. Joe Retaliation series. So I think the Iron Man Bleeding Edge armor also has this exact same ball joint on the ankle. So this is a really phenomenal ankle, and a lot of figures should get it. I think Hasbro is moving towards the ball joint ankle only because it cuts down a lot of the extra articulation they've got to add to these figures. And they still give you extra added articulation, so I think it's a really good job. So let's get her back on this pick stand, which is very difficult, just by the way, because she had one. You have a little trouble standing her up in the right way without making her look all awkward. X23, who resembles somebody in our forums, in our groups, but I'm not going to mention what her name is not. She knows who she is. That seems to be her character. Let me focus this camera back together. Okay, next up we have Wolverine, the X-Force single carded version. Now Wolverine um, has a gun and a, and a katana. I can't find the katana, I just lost it some of the ground, so sorry about that. But this is the real X-Force paint job to match X-23, the Warpath, and Archangel. Um, and like I said, this is, I, I, think, it, I think it's like a mix of... Uh, Wolverine Origins, or maybe it is a Wolverine Origins figure, but the hips don't look familiar. But the, oh no, the elbows are not, because the elbows on Wolverine Origins were ball jointed, so I, could, I stand corrected. This is a Marvel Universe figure all the way. Now I'm sure this figure was reviewed several, several times by other reviewers, because this figure's been out since, what, 2009? But when it came out, I'm pretty sure everybody was in shock and awe that you got an X-Force Wolverine, as opposed to just a regular Wolverine. Um, it's got a ball jointed uh, upper torso. Ball jointed head, ball jointed shoulders. You have the biceps, biceps. Um, what do you call it? Bicep cut. You have the single jointed elbow and the wrist twist. 
so that's pretty cool of course you can always take those hands out if you want Wolverine to have the claws always extended um, being that this is a missions type Wolverine and if you wanted to hold the katana and the gun you can find black hands from another figure and just swap them out um, you got the same type of uh, tight hip joint um, but it does have a little bit of movement than X-23 does you have a double jointed knee you've got the ankle twist with a little bit of pivot so that's always a plus and that's a cool thing so let's get him back on his stand that's cool next up on my list um, I got uh, if I can get this guy going it's really hard to keep him posted there you go now this is the one from the X-Force pack uh, this is pretty much an astonishing Wolverine repainted um, has got the same exact articulation same body mold um, but he also has the Wolverine, Wolverine origin peg holes so the pegs um, are very very or wider than the Marvel Universe ones so you have to use probably like the Iron Man stands or something so he's got twist at the um, forearm and not the wrist ball jointed hips with a double jointed knee right with a little thigh swivel and then um, you've got twist at the ankle as well as a small pivot as well so gives him the, he can pose a lot better than the other Wolverine can and I think overall I'm probably going to use him in my X-Force poses better there's the peg holes I was talking about it's pretty pretty gaping payroll. The claws in this one I think are a lot cooler. They look more menacing and being that they were together they always had a uniform look as opposed to the Marvel Universe one which didn't really have a uniform look and they always spread out kind of like X-23 X-23's uh, claws do. Um, so want to give a big shout out to everybody out there in uh, Marvel Toy Lines everybody out there in all the Marvel groups you guys are doing a great job especially with San Diego Comic Con around the corner um, and I just want to make sure that everybody gets what they were looking for. And if not, we'll try to help out with what we can. But speaking of San Diego Comic-Con, as you can see, they released the Marvel Legends Deadpool in this deco. But we've got them in the Marvel Universe lineup. This is the Wolverine Origins mold with a gray and black deco. Which, very menacing, very cool looking figure. Um, same art, similar articulation. He's got the wrist twist. He's got the ball jointed elbow, ball jointed shoulder. Ball jointed neck, or ball jointed head, or whatever you want to call it. Right? He's got upper torso articulation, but because of the the belt or the whatever, whatever you call that thing, the strap going around his body keeps him from moving. Got ball jointed hips with a little bit of thigh swivel, and uh, double jointed knees, and of course he's got ankle movement. So this is what movie lineups and swivel. This is what movie lineups used to do to their figures. Now we get less and less articulation and less weapons. He comes with uh, two katanas that store in the back. Very cool. Katanas are always welcome, especially on a figure like this. He didn't come with any guns though, so you're gonna have to add guns to Deadpool. But Deadpool is uh, he'll he'll, amal he'll amalgamate himself with whatever weapon he uses. So that's the cool thing about this character. And that's why one of the reasons a lot of people like him is very versatile. But he also suffers from the peg hole syndrome. So you can't use Marvel Universe stands to post up him and the X-Force Wolverine because of where they come from. So let's move him over here. Next to X-23. Alright, next up on my list is a familiar face. He's a lot more difficult to pose. I'm having problem posing with these people here, but Psylocke. Yes, Mrs. Braddock herself. This is Captain Britain's sister, who was turned into a ninja by Asians, even though she's British. Well, read her story. It's very complicated. But eventually, she she joins the Uncanny X Force. Um, she has the ball jointed head, upper torso movement, lower torso movement, ball jointed shoulder. She's got the hinged elbow with the wrist twist. I was a little 
skeptical about this figure because X-23 came out the wave before her and she had more articulation, yet uh, Psylocke came after her. She didn't get any of that articulation. And this is a ninja, supposedly, that does a lot of acrobatic moves, so you figure you want to pose her in a more acrobatic way, but instead she suffers from those loose hip pegs. Double jointed knee, twist, and pivot on the ankle. This is just like any other female bucks from Marvel Universe. So nothing special, anything like that. Let's put her down. Not literally down like a dog, but she does come with a nice little uh, Psylocke sigh effect with the sword. I'm from some of you guys that read the comics or play the Marvel Universe or Marvel vs. Capcom series, Psylocke is known for coming out with her her beam out of her hand. So here he is, X Force. Warpath. Now this is from the X Force three pack from the Marvel Universe lineup. Um, same exact body mold, same exact body mold as Thunderbird and the Warpath single carded, both variants. Comes with these cool swords, or should I say, cool blades? Sorry, that have these handles that keep it from falling out of his hand because he's got these extra large open hands that's not meant to hold anything with something like this. But I wouldn't get on his bad side at all. He's a pretty big dude. It's a lot bigger. They made him a lot bigger in the Marvel Legends lineup. In the Marvel Universe, he's scaled down. But he's got all the similar articulation that you get expect from Marvel Universe. You know, the hips, double jointed knees, the bicep swivel, single jointed elbows, wrist twist, upper torso movement, and the ball jointed head. So let's get him over here. Now, I want to talk about this. This is a very common set to get. You can get this anywhere. They're not hard to find. You're not going to break the bank. You can probably get them all together as a set loose on eBay somewhere from the range of under thirty dollars. So it's worth getting all these X Force figures in one in one shot. A lot of people would love to have them, with the exception of the single card of Wolverine, which is very hard to get sometimes. Everyone else is pretty much a peg warmer, depending on what part of the country you live in. But the color schemes didn't really match. Like Wolverine didn't really match the X Force Archangel or X twenty three. I didn't have a Wolf Spain, but I figured I'd bring out Wolf anyways from G.I. Joe. This is Snake Eyes uh, Wolf, so I thought it was cool to have around. And of course, Psylocke doesn't have a X-23 outfit set up at all. The only one that kind of fits in if you take the silver and black uh, of these costumes would probably be Deadpool. Deadpool has a gray color scheme, and that gray color scheme works well with him. And he's probably the only one that is allowed to have that color scheme at all. So when you see Deadpool in the comics or in the new Marvel Legends, that he'll have his X-Force costume, it's going to be in that deco. So a lot of people, you know, go with it. So let's bring out. You fix this camera here. And me one second. And tell you, it's been a really rough week moving, getting all my stuff together. You know, that's why it's taking me a while to get these reviews out. Plus the San Diego Comic Con and then the Batman murder and. There's a lot of stuff going out there, man, especially in the Marvel, in the comic book community. We need to unify and not let things like that happen again. Whoa, what is that? Where'd that come from? Is that who I think it is? <laughs> that was actually a gift from somebody on Facebook. And um, my, my friend from Canada, Martin, thank you very much. Big ups, I appreciate it. You really took care of me on that one. You're the man, bro. You're the man. Uh, see what play, man. See, Monsieur. I like it a lot. Um, this is the warpath that everyone's looking for, everyone's chasing for. Similar, just like the X Force pack, the difference is the color scheme. Color scheme is silver and black the way it needs to be, so you can match up with Wolverine. Like I said, the unfortunate part is the Wolverine on the left is not the one that has the right deco, and the Wolverine on the right does, but I won't use the Wolverine on the right all the time. One on the left looks a lot more menacing. But who cares? Beggars can't be choosers. And whoa, I thought I already did an Archangel review. I didn't know I was going to get an X Force one. This one also came as a pack and as a gift from Martin. Thank you very much, bro. I really appreciate it, man. Without you, I wouldn't have this. My collection is almost complete. Like, I only need Solid Vision I have, and probably Blade. And that's it, I'm done. So. Thank you very much. The color scheme on this is phenomenal. It's amazing what color can do to a figure. The black and silver with the blue face and the red eyes really, really make it stand out. 
um, really make it very unique. So I, I thank Martin for hooking me up with that. He gave me a phenomenal deal. I don't want to disclose it because I'm sure he's selling his other stuff, but that is a cr crazy looking figure. I could see what the hoopla was about. Interesting thing about it, it was going to be X Force Archangel. It was going to be Norman Osborn. Um, I can't remember what the other figure was. Mary Jane and somebody else was the choice of the uh, digital comics exclusive. So obviously, X Force Archangel won that that poll, and a lot of people preferred him over the other choices. They did give us a Norman Osborn head as a variant to the Iron Patriot. I wish they would have gave us a Hammer Norman Osborn. Eventually, they probably might. So you never know. Or if not, that story's dead. They're just going to move on with it. Um, Hasbro's done a really big job thanks to Mr. David Vonner. Unfortunately, he's no longer with the company. And um, we just got to accept it. There's nothing we can do about it. Luckily, some of his work still carries on. And if you've been at San Diego Comic Con, you saw that a lot of these figures um, were re kit bashed and redecoed. But you know what? All that mattered was the concept and articulation. She Hulk has two figures, and the first one hasn't even been released yet. Uh, they used a new Magneto by using the head of uh, the head of someone else and using the Doctor Doom cape and using the AIM soldier body from the old Magneto and as you can see they created a really nice Magneto uh, Wolverine as I saw has uh, a new body mold so that's going to be interesting uh, other figures are like the Future Foundation Spider-Man and the Doctor Doom Future Foundation so all these figures that are coming out I think uh, have a lot to do with David Vaughn or whether it was his concept or not um, only because they're taking figures that currently exist repainting them or re-kit bashing so they can swap parts around all they want they've got a large library to do so and I think a lot of you customizers out there some of the reasons why Hasbro does that because they see what you can do with the little that you've got to work with and they have the presses they have the mold so all they gotta do is just reproduce it and repaint it so if you guys are out there keep up the good work you guys are inspiring this, this company to look at your community and take credit um, on their behalf on these figures even though we know you came out with it I know John Papa Sergio big shout outs to him he came out with a Nick Fury that used the Winter Soldier body from the Captain America lineup and made a Nick Fury ironically they came out with a Nick Fury exactly like that so you'd be amazed at what they're looking at and how quick they can develop a figure without having to spend too much money so they took the mold from the Archangel of this X-Force pack at least the wings they did and created it as a Marvel Legends so that goes to show you what they can do to swap things around so I want to go ahead and show you what the Marvel Legends X-Force pack looks like it's pretty much these three characters the way you see them just like that with the exception of Wolverine having a different paint scheme but this is the Marvel Legends uh, figure pack that you'd be getting from San Diego Comic Con, so hopefully some of you guys got it. I'm not a big fan of it, so I'm not a, not really going to pick it up or break my bank on it, but tune in. Thanks. Wait, how come I wasn't invited to San Diego Comic Con? You guys couldn't put me in the pack? You, you made me a single-carded figure? And I'm a variant? What's up with that? I can't take this anymore. I'm gonna kill myself. Music provided by Nightmare on Wax. That is the X-Men card, Series 3, Marvel Universe card collectors. Warpath dressed up as his brother, Thunderbird. Archangel and his primary colors. This is the original X Force setup and another original X Force setup. Thanks for watching and keeping the community going. Tune in and subscribe. Thanks for watching again. Have a good trade. Subscribe and follow us on Facebook. Peace.